Shut up and sit down. Welcome, everybody, to episode 137 of Third Shift. This is a beautiful, beautiful episode, all sorts of little tiny nuggets for you to sink into your little mouth and have a great time with. But of course, as you all know, before we get to all that fun news and entertainment, we've got to say, hey, Matt, the guy who's always with me, as you all should know. Hello, I'm here. Hello, Matt. Hi. How are you doing? It is me, Eric, as well. <laughs> Hi, Eric. How are you doing? Hey, hey. <laughs> Matt, how was your week this week, my friend? Uh, it's one of those strange weeks that doesn't seem like it even existed. Because I think over the weekend, some things that I did, and I'll get to those in a second, got me got my sleep schedule all janked up. So like I had a day off, and then it's like, but what day is it when I come back to work? It felt like a Wednesday, even though it was a Tuesday. Today feels like it should be like Saturday. I don't even know. But one thing I did do cool over the weekend, I went and saw Shazam, which was actually really fun and probably is my new favorite DC movie. It's silly and goofy and corny and heartwarming in like all the the right ways a superhero that looks like that should be like if you want just like a dark smash slam bang that's this is not the movie for you but if you remember superheroes being cool as a kid and like fun and i mean mostly lighthearted the movie's mostly lighthearted then that this this is a movie you will like i mean it's just i don't know how to describe it without getting into spoilers i will say the all hands on deck scene was awesome i love that so once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, just a ton of fun. Laughed, had a good time, and then it was a it was an effective, fun, old school type of superhero movie. Lots of good stuff there. So I enjoyed that a lot, better than 99 percent of the other DC superhero movies as of late. So good times there. Speaking of good times, oh my goodness, it was WrestleMania weekend, NXT Takeover New York, amazing show. Top to bottom, matches were freaking great, awesome. Just I, every NXT takeover, everybody should watch it. It's it's they're all amazing, they're all good. This was no exception. Just ugh, just great. And then actually WrestleMania, which usually you watch an NXT and then you watch like the WWE pay per view, and it's like a little bit of step down, or there'll be like funky booking decisions or like goofy things that are happening. WrestleMania was actually really cool this year. Well, I mean. WrestleMania is usually the coolest show, but this one was like all good. It went on for like 18 hours, which is the only problem. But there was lots of positive storylines, big wins, not a lot of like screw job finishes and bad feeling moments. There were only a couple of those. Everything else was just boom, happy ending, boom, happy ending, boom. Here's what the fans wanted. This is what you get. Boom, 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 boom. Cool moment over here that had nothing to do with anything, but brought back somebody in a really cool way. John Cena came back in his old like rapper outfit with his old music and his, his heel persona. It was so good. And just from top to bottom, the show was a lot of fun, which sometimes you know shows cannot be. If they have one particular finish in mind or they want to take the story this way, and it's like, oh, man, why? But every one of those finishes, except for, like, like I said, one or two, it was just good feelings, good happy ending, good fun. Good matches, too, like long, you know, well-done matches, well-designed matches, well-paced matches. Really cool stuff. I really like the the Daniel Bryan, Kofi Kingston for the for the title. It felt like I was watching a New Japan match, like the way it was paced and like the slow, steady kind of pace of the intro, and then it started speeding up, and Kofi started coming back, doing his thing. Really good stuff, just... A lot of fun from top to bottom, but it ended at 12.30, and that's what screwed up my whole sleeping schedule. Oh, it was like, that makes sense. Oh, get to sleep by like 1 o'clock, wake up, Bonnie's like, hey, you should be at work. It's 5.30. I went, oh, God, no. You, oh, you can't do this to me, body. Uh. So then that threw off the whole rest of the week, which makes it feel like I didn't even have a week, so I don't even know. As far as video games-wise, played a little bit of Nier Automata over the weekend. That is a lot of fun, and it's very strange and weird. It's weird. I, I like how weird it is and like seeing things happen and going, what just happened? Why? Who was Why? that? Why did this happen? What was that thing that got killed even? I don't even know what that was, let alone who this is, why she came in, why she killed it. Here's a quest. Go to this person. They got a fish to eat. That hey, was the best. Eat the fish. You die. <laughs> I heard this does weird things to androids. Bloop. 
You're completely dead. You're no, dead. No. Game over. <laughs> you're, so, you're so dead you can't even res back up with a false body. It's just boop. And then the credits scrolling through in like one second. Boop. Game over. Awesome. Uh, that, was, just that was ridiculous. Perfect. That was great. <laughs> But then, other than Nier Automata, which I only streamed a couple times over the weekend, what have I been playing? You all thought I would be done talking about it because I told you that I beat Thronebreaker. I will never stop talking about Thronebreaker because I've been playing through Thronebreaker again, getting those last two trophies, having a ton of fun, picking all the other options that I didn't pick last time, and seeing how evil or mean or sometimes nice if I was evil and mean the first time Meave can be in all these different situations I got Black Rayla with me and I just finally figured out that her card synergizes so well with this other one because she can draw a card but by drawing that card you can draw a card that gives her more orders to draw more cards so you can get draw him use him to funnel her use the second order of her to funnel another car that refreshes everybody's order, so she gets a new order, and then the guy who gives orders gets another order, so you can just, boom. You can have all your cards out on the field like, like that, with those, two, with those two cards synergizing together. So good. I love stuff like that. So I'm having a ball with it. Plus, the other cool thing is, I talked about on what you're playing, but when you play on easy mode, you can just skip battles if you want, and it'll win them for you. So if I get to one of those puzzle battles, it's like, ah, oh, I kind of remember, but I don't really feel like going through this four or five times because I know I just get gold at the end of this one. All right, try it once. Ah, eh, it's not really coming to me. Bloop, skip the battle, poof, done. Get the card, get the gold. It's not like I haven't done it before because uh-huh. I did it all the way through the first time. It's just such a nice time saver, especially for people who want to play it again because you know you're going to want to play it again because Throne Break is amazing. That's about it for me this week. What about you, Eric? How was your week? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, this weekend was my youngest daughter's birthday party. So we, as a family, threw a nice little birthday party for her. And it was a Hello Kitty-themed party. So I nice. I took the persona of Hello Kitty, and I, I became Hello Kitty. I put on a pink tail, put on my cool little Hello Kitty mask, I made grilled cheese sandwiches with cutouts of Hello Kitty, so I cut out the bread and Hello Kitty shapes, slathered the butter on, and the grilled, you know, the cheese did the whole thing, got tomato soup, threw all sorts of goldfish into them, so it was like, you know, soup with the fishies swimming in it, because kitties love to eat fish. Which is what kitties love. That's right, Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy, we had a scavenger hunt for them where we had these cool little Hello Kitty things, and they had to find them with the little candies and treats inside. It was fun. It was a good time. Did the whole happy birthday, cupcakes, blow out the candles, da 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 da. Lots of friends and kids showed up, so she had a blast. We had fun, and then, you know, the extent you can have the fun. The adults, I made a whole bunch of uh, goulash for, so I spiced that up with some good stuff, did all the things. That doesn't fit the theme. Cats hey, don't like goulash. This was for the adults. The kids never saw what was happening. It was in little, it was in hidden away in these secret little crock pots off in the corner. I said, you guys, hey, 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 don't eat tomato soup and grilled cheese. That's for the kids. Go over there and get some goulash and have a good time, all right? And yes. I had the sour cream, you know, and the cheeses and all the extras, the, mm. the accoutrements or whatever they call them, you know. Ooh la la. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that went by, spent the rest of the afternoon cleaning up, relaxing, doing a whole bunch of nothing. Then Sunday, I went and saw Pet Cemetery, and nice. it was good. It was it was a fun movie, but it wasn't scary at all. Like there were yeah. there was like literally for me anyway. There's no jump scares. There was no like tense moments, and I don't mm. know if it's because truly it just didn't really have any, or if it's because of course I've read the book, I've seen the old movie, obviously. So at this point, even though they changed some things. You know what you're you know what you're seeing. You know exactly what's going to happen in a general sense and how it all goes down. Especially because soapbox time, that secondary trailer showed you everything that happened. Literally in the whole did. Movie. It did. It showed you yeah. everything but the final little few moments. So the yeah. only thing that stick trailer didn't give away was the last five six minutes of that movie. <laughs> so yeah, I, I agree. That was pretty frustrating because it's okay. What the heck? What? Why? Why? Mm-hmm. It was cool. The actors actresses did a very good job. The the girl in this one was phenomenal. Really just made you feel like nice. she was not quite human but still human. It was 
she did a good job. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I know you know we all go kid actors, all those, those rascally little rabbits, but she pulled it off, made it work. She seems sadistic and threatening. You know how yes. typically you're like a kid. I ain't scared of a kid, man. It's a child. It's a child. Yeah. I will throw this child across the room. But she gave yeah. that nice like, no, this this child's got some, a problem. And it's not good. So it was good. I enjoyed it. Had fun nice. with it. I was like I said, I was mildly disappointed. I was just hoping for a little more like, who, you know, one of those moments. You know, I'm like, Ooh, like trying almost getting scared, but no one's coming, so tensing and getting ready for it, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. I, I will say, and since you mentioned the child actors. There are a lot of kid actors in Shazam. Dialing back to that for just a second, they were all actually really good. I mean, some of the characters were a little like kind of one note, but the like the the main kid, the two main kid actors, they were all totally solid. They were like normal. They seemed like normal people on the screen instead of a kid playing a character. Uh-huh. So I thought that they did a good job too. Just figured I'd mention that. So here we go. Hollywood is training them children and making them stronger right. in the action. <laughs> mm-hmm. Beyond that. I didn't do much anything. I went to work, came home. Y'all know the rigmarole. Beyond all that, video game-wise, it's been a rough week. I was talking with Matt off the show. I'm in uh, one of them ruts where I get on and I stare at my PlayStation screen again, and I don't really do much of anything. Yeah. And I and the saddest part is is I have Borderlands Game of the Year Edition, yeah. and I have, of course, Division 2. And I love both of those games, but for whatever reason is. Borderlands, I have a great time playing in the daytime. Like on the weekends when I'm sitting down here and the kids are playing and I'm doing nothing, I'm having a good time with it. But at nighttime, it's hard for me to play it because Borderlands 1 especially is a somber type game and the and the music in it yeah, true. is Diablo music. It's basically, every time it comes on, all I'm reminded of is the original Diablo. And the original yeah. Diablo, for whatever reason in my head, has dark, dark nights dark nights staying up real late to four or five in the morning being extremely Uh, tired you know loving it but never wanting to stop because i was a kid you know i was young when i was playing diablo so it's just all those three o'clock mornings with my buddies you know i'm not going to bed so i'm so sleepy and keep doing it and so borderlands when that music is hitting me it just instantly i'm just like back to like dark nights late 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 gotta go to sleep but i'm not gonna and instantly I'm tired, I want to go to bed, and I think I should be going to bed. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, got to play this in the daytime. Mm. Can't do it. <laughs> so those are the two games I have been playing. But like I said, I, I've been kind of sitting there staring at the screen, then giving up and going and watching Game of Thrones Season 7 because it is time this weekend, 9 o'clock p.m. That's right. Woo boy. First episode. It's going to be glorious. And I can't believe how much happened in season seven. After going yeah. back and watching it, I was like, "Oh wow!" My brain had decided to put this over the course of like two, two and a half seasons, and it all actually mm-hmm. just happened in the one last season. And I'm like, "Dang, what the heck?" Every episode is like big, big story event, big items, big things. Everything's happening. I remember it started feeling almost like. The only thing I can equate it to is like a soap opera mm-hmm. that I watch at mom's house. They're like, hey, we're going across town. And then the next scene is, boom, we made it over here. We're having the conversation. Yeah. We're going to go all the way across the country. Here we are. We made it. Uh, oh. And that's literally what okay. they did. Yeah. I mean, they would typically, to show passing of time, have another scene from a different group yeah, they'd, in between they'd it. something else. But it was still just, Yeah, boom, snap, pop. Because it's only an hour or so per episode. So no matter what you do, it's, it's snap, pop. But I appreciate yeah. it because... It's the end of the sh- it's the end of the season. It's the end of the show. It's the end of the story. That you had to keep moving it. I like how every episode you know for sure you're getting gangbusters. You're getting yeah. you're getting some content. You're getting some surprises. You're getting some feelings. It's happening. It happened all last season, and of course you know it's going to happen this season. Whereas in the previous old seasons, whilst I appreciate all the story and all the dialogue and all the emotions and character building that took place. Sometimes it got ridiculous. Like the uh, season where, like I always say, season the season where Brienne and Jamie just walked down the King's Road. The entire season was just them going down the King's Road. And I'm like, yeah, it's just a show will never end if we do this, guys. <laughs> uh, I will say, I mean, I think those first four seasons were all awesome to me because I felt like it was right. Uh-huh. But then I think it was either five or six, one of those two, where it was just like, can something just happen? 
like stuff happened, but it wasn't like overall things weren't happening. It was this little squabble here is happening, and then this one over there is happening. It's like just do do it. Yeah, go. Let's go. Let's start going, boys and girls. We don't we don't have time for all this forever. And then they cracked the whip and shot the yeah. starter pistol and <laughs> that, blasted that, that off ever. for that last season. <laughs> and then we're like that that freaking runner, the fastest runner. What's his name? Uh, yeah, what's his name, Eric? Uh, oh my god, you know I don't know his name, man. You know I don't know it. <laughs> you say speed, you blade, say it bolt, bolt. There it is. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'll never forget that because side story. Eric probably already remembers this back in the back of his brain, but back in the day when we worked at MSMS, we put service calls in on the the Xerox equipment. And it would go through a call routing center in Jamaica. Oh, yeah. And so I remember <laughs> Jen said once she called in the Xerox thing, and she was like, the lady was like, oh, how you doing up there? And she was like, oh, we're doing pretty good. You know, it's got a machine problem. How you guys doing down there? And they were like, oh, man, a boy Usain Bolt just won the 100-meter the, the dash or whatever. We all partying <laughs> like it's crazy up in here. And I was like, that's the greatest thing. That's That's awesome. wonderful, yes. That is fantastic, and that does bring back great memories. <laughs> uh-huh. Good old Bolt. Oh, man. So, yes, you're right. Beyond the the show, that uh, not much, man. That's that's pretty much wrapped up my week. Not too crazy. Except for, of course, the news and all the going-ons with keeping watch on Borderlands, hitting the, hitting, hitting the books, hitting the Twitters, and going, oh, what's, what's everybody finding out? What's going on? Oh, my gosh. Oh, let's get, let's get hyped. Woo. Man. You know it. But we'll get to that in a second because that was us individually this week. Together as a team this week, although we kind of did it some last week and some of this week, I dropped What You Play in Third Shift out on the Patreon. If you're a patron at the $3 and up tier, you know it, you see it. Go check it out. Go have fun. I did a lot of. I had a lot of fun putting together that intro and the outro and the whole theme of the episode. Uh, I made it all around something that means a lot to me. So, please, please, please enjoy that. What you playing? Because <laughs> I enjoyed it. I had a ton of fun. I had so many files on my desktop, little chunks and bits and bobs here and there. Start. You start to like, get confused. You're like, oh, what's happening? It, it looked like an old man desktop. I got this project and all its files, this project and all its files, and the, the conglomeration of it all. So that's what we did as a team this week. Coming up next week, we got IG2G episode 51 for you guys. I know something, an indie game that I've been following for like a year or two that just is dropping, I think, tomorrow. So I'll be talking about that on IG2G, plus a lot more fun stuff. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of games going on right now, a lot of topics I want to bring up. So this next IG2G should be a sweet, sweet baby gem. You know what else we got? We got shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands the pre-sequel. So hit up the Twitter, the Red, the Forms. Aruga, hang on. Whoa, pause the truck. Back it up there, buddy. Because we got the very first instance of shift codes for Golden Keys in Borderlands Game of the Year oh edition. Oh, my gosh. Now, they, they did kind of drop these as like a special, hey, guys, we're having some issues okay. with some hot fixes and stuff. While we test those out, here's some shift codes to keep you happy. But there we go. Shift codes for Golden Keys and Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Shift codes for Golden Keys and Borderlands, the Game of the Year edition. Wow, that went really smooth, even though I haven't ever said that before. So hit up the Twitter, the Reddit, the forums, the Instagram. Hit up your preferred shift code provider and get yourself some free loot in two different games. And you're going to be proud of me, everybody, because those keys have been turned in, and I have them nice. in my pockets. You know why? Because I'm playing Borderlands, Game of the Year edition right now. I'm in it, thick as thieves, so no duh, I'm going to get me some Golden Keys. Look at that rhyme. You didn't even know I could That's do it. Woo! I, I sexy. didn't think it was going to happen. Sexy. Pretty nice. But before we move on, since we're on it, I'll just briefly mention, you did say that those keys were given out as a, hey, thanks for your patience. What are we referring to? If you're not sure, there's an issue going on with Borderlands Game of the Year right now where when you're trying to play with other players, 90% of the time it doesn't work. You can't huh. you can't sync up and play with anybody. So like when I was trying to play with a couple friends online – couldn't get into their game. They couldn't get into my game. I found that it worked if you could if you got into the the lower end game, but the guy oh, okay. if someone had passed you in storyline, they couldn't get in your game. Mm-hmm. It just wouldn't work. But I, if they were trying to get in your game, the lower end one, you could do it, but you couldn't join them. That makes sense. So because I mean there there was still that issue with. Uh borderlands 2 the handsome collection Mm -hmm. like if you were past somebody in the storyline they'd hand it in and you'd get nothing Mm -hmm. and that's what happens in this yeah yeah. so because i was able to join on sean but i wasn't on the quest he was on and so i just Mm -hmm. ran around with him 
and helped him kill stuff, but I didn't get you know yeah. requ- I didn't get any turn-ins for it, nothing. So mm-hmm. it was unfortunate, but at least we got to play together. So it's something they're looking at. I'm not quite. I don't think they fixed it yet. I haven't seen anything on mm-hmm. it yet, but hopefully that's going to be very very soon because I'd love to get in and play with obviously some of the peeps that are on there rocking and rolling. So that was what mm-hmm. the keys were for. Just to clarify, since we're there, so I don't have to reiterate and come back to it. Cool, cool. And then before we get to the big topic of discussion or some of the the bigger topics, we got all kinds of little bits of news here and there all throughout the Borderlands universe. It's been a big week for Borderlands news. I'm going to start off with something that I saw that was really cool. I retweeted it from the show account. There was some kind of gaming festival in, like, London. I think it was, like, Relax Play or something was the the Twitter handle of it. I don't know much about it because I am in Michigan, not in London. But what Borderlands did do... Since they had revealed Borderlands 3, they painted a giant Borderlands 3 mural on the outside of, I think it was, I think it was a gaming pub. And if it wasn't just a gaming pub, it was just a pub across the street from where this festival was. And it was the whole Borderlands 3 box art, looking fresh, looking cool. So if you haven't seen the time-lapse video of that getting put up, definitely go check that out. That's pretty cool stuff. Indeed it was. Also, another little nugget, something really cool, is that they are building for the Gearbox Studio, probably, I'm assuming, Mm -hmm. the Calypso Twins statue. And they're going to go ahead and showcase through videos, whatnot, the process of them putting this sucker together and making it. And they already put out the, the preliminary, you know, the introduction to it out on the Twitter feeds. So if you're interested in seeing them from day one start building these statues of the Calypso Twins from Borderlands 3, whom are the bad guys if you don't know, you're going to want to check that out. Follow Gearbox Official because I'm sure those videos will be coming out periodically for over the next few months. And now you mentioned you were assuming it was for Gearbox Studios because they have all the big, mm-hmm. they big, have the statues, big statues in their lobby. Yeah. But they did say, hey, these are the guys who are building the statues to come with us to our shows as well. True that. So when oh. they're going to have some big presence at E3, just like they I'm did sure, with Battleborn. Yeah, you're going to be able to walk up and just be like, "Oh, posing in front of the Calypso Twins in my cool Borderlands cosplay." Ching, selfie time with the Calypso Twins. Exactly, and then a throw out just to make sure everybody's aware: it's Finger G that's making the statue yep. for Gearbox. And of course, it sounds like they've worked with them before because they've shouted out mm-hmm. that there's some really awesome peeps. They love them. They love working with them. Da 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 da. So if that interests you, make sure you check out Finger G. And maybe you got a lot of money. Maybe they can make you a statue too. You know. Maybe they can make you a statue of both of the on-air personalities from Third Shift, oh, yeah. and then a statue of Danny behind the computer in the background with a cat on her shoulder. Exactly. You can just have you can have us there on your desk with you, or in your house life size. Just that'd be that'd be out. pretty creepy, you know, coming downstairs and there's me and you, and then Danny with like, you know, mask face on with the cat. Make sure the light, yeah, eyes light up. <laughs> that'd be pretty awesome, though. <laughs> I. It would be awesome for me. I could put you on the couch over here, and then I, I, we don't even need to do the no, video chat. No. It's like, dude, Eric, what are you doing over there? Monkey slap. Pour, you know, pour water on your head when you're acting <laughs> just, stupid. Just, oh, take it out just, on Eric. That would be like three weeks later. My face would just be distorted and meshed up from you punching <laughs> it and slapping it and hitting it. <laughs> All the paint is just like melting off your face. <laughs> Why does it look like a sledgehammer went through the side of my head? Oh, Eric, you're fine, dude. It didn't happen. UPS guy must have dropped it shipping, man. I don't know. It was crazy. It's fine. It's fine. It was wild. It's fine. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking of something else that looks great, I think they announced this maybe on Friday, right after the show dropped. But they've showed off if you pre-order Borderlands Three via PSN, you get a free dynamic theme. It's the Borderlands Three cover art. It's got the shine. It's got the clouds moving around. It's got the little motion on the roses. It's not a whole lot that it does. But if you love some Borderlands and you want to show it off on your PS4, pre-order it via PSN, you get it for free. Oh, Boom. That's a beautiful backdrop. I'm super yeah. tempted. Like uh, we discussed, I kind of want to get the nice physical big copy edition with all the goodies and all the thingies. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the same token, it sounds really nice just to go buy it right now and then pop that Borderlands 3 backdrop up there. So I can just sit here mm-hmm. and every time I'm staring at my PlayStation screen not knowing what to play, at least it looks really <laughs> dang good. They could be like, man, I wish I was playing yeah, that. Right. What should I play instead? Borderlands 1? <sighs> it's not Borderlands 3, though. Yeah. Uh. And don't get me wrong. That Borderlands Game of the Year edition is beautiful. They, you know, I, I've already said it. The upgrades they did for yeah. it, fantastic. It looks great. It feels great. It's all that Borderlands goodness. But I've discussed why I'm having issues playing it at night. So I ain't trying to diss on Borderlands 1 at all. It's a fantastic game. Gunplay's amazing. 
Uh, I missed I missed that gunplay. I hope Borderlands 3 gets a little bit of that back. Not all the floaty mm-hmm. floaty guns. But we'll see. Yeah. Time will tell. <laughs> and I want to, I've been tempted to get that, you know, pre-order it and get it myself. Obviously I want physical editions cuz I'm a physical nut. But two, I mean I got a Thronebreaker theme on my PS4 right now. Yeah. So every time I boot it up, I just go Oh, yeah, just hook it up straight into my veins. I'm like, I wasn't even going to play Thronebreaker, but now I see me and I see Willem over there. I'm just like, yeah, and it just, just tempts you, it. just tempts you. Makes you feel good, makes you feel ready. Oh, yeah. Just roll around in it. Oh, it's just card battle. Cards everywhere. Jeez, old Pete. <laughs> You're a maniac, Matt. You're crazy. You're a crazy man. <laughs> and speaking of crazy, Matt, you're crazy if you don't head on over to the brand new Borderlands 3 VIP site and get yourself signed up, all right? So if you don't know, they went ahead and got a whole new thing going, this VIP system, where you go sign up, it's going to get you shift codes, it's going to sync everything up, you're going to be able to participate in cool little events via the Twitters, via the site itself. They haven't really announced big in details what's going to be happening, they just said that Season 1's coming soon, we're assuming that there's going to be loot to get, obviously they've, they've announced that there'll be like loot chests as rewards for doing certain specific things, like right now you can get points just for like going to the Facebooks and retweeting and doing this or that or... Whatever yeah, you get points, you can you can turn them in for the shift codes right now, and of course they've said there's going to be other stuff and other rewards to get in the future, and of course on top of it all, right now there's a whole bunch of their stream team going on, mm-hmm. so if you go there and you use their code to sign up, it's like a, a bonus for whatever your, whoever your favorite streamer is that's part of this stream team. So mm-hmm. if you love Broman, uh Jolt's Dude, Killer Six, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm, you know, I'm forgetting names. I'm sorry if I forget your name. I'll try to remember them in the mm-hmm. future. But if you like one of those guys or gals, make sure you head over there, use their code, and get on there because I'm sure it helps them out in some way. If nothing else, it just at least represents that that person, that you know, that streamer, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And if you do like those streamers, be aware that stream team is active right now. Like Monday through Friday on the Gearbox official Twitch channel, you can go watch all those streamers. I think they're, like I said, Monday through Friday, I think there's two people a day. I'm not sure what the schedule is. It's when Mental Mars tweeted out about it, it said, like, hey, check the widget at the bottom of the page. But for me on my phone, it didn't really work right. So I can't see the schedule. But there are two people scheduled Monday through Friday every single day. And they were broadcasting at lunch when I was there checking it out so check out that schedule check out your favorite streamer and check out some borderlands content Woo, you know it and while you're there checking out that borderlands content i want to remind everybody that may 1st is a huge borderlands gameplay reveal event that all of said streamers and more because oh my gosh they are throwing out these invites like candy at christmas time i'm just waiting Mm. i got my hand open and my mouth open ready to receive said gift but if it doesn't happen, that's okay because you know what? I'm going to be tuning in for sure to my favorite streamer and or just Gearbox mm. official to find out what the heck is going on. Check out this gameplay footage and see what Borderlands 3 is all about because the gameplay and especially those skill sets are very, very important. And I just I want to chomp and sink my teeth right up into them. Come on, Matt. Give me that good news. Tell me. Third shift. Did they get I'm that? Just, I'm, I'm, re, I'm reloading the email right, right now. now. I don't see anything yet. It's, All right, it's listeners. Probably come, you know, it's a whole new business day. Yeah. You know, they're probably going to do it on All right, Friday. So Friday morning. That's the, that's the day as the show drops. They're going to be like, oh, look, reward, because we're launching on Borderlands Dang. night Whew. for you guys. We listen to you guys for all our all the hints and info. They'll be like, oh, hey, good good episode, Third Shift. What do you think about this? Whoop, whoop. Hey, if you want to see us May 1st playing some freaking Borderlands 3, going nuts, being ridiculous like we always are, Go tell Gearbox. Go tell them. Say, hey, y'all need to get them third shift freakos out there because they're going to have a good time. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. But regardless, definitely tune into that gameplay reveal event. Like you said, I'm super – I want to see the game in motion from the player's perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the little bits and hints and little tiny clips. I want to see somebody moving around, moving a groove and shooting those guns, seeing how that works. And then if there's skills on top of it, I would assume maybe it's like the first like level one to five before you pop your first skill. But even that, I want to see that. I want to see it all happen. I, I'm sure we're gonna. I'm sure they're gonna give them a nice little mission area to play in, and we're gonna get to watch. Obviously, mm-hmm. them do whatever characters they want. They might even get time to do them all. I don't know how long this thing's gonna be or how structured it's gonna be. But we're gonna see yeah. skills. We're gonna see gunplay. We're gonna see movement, traversal. We're gonna see at least a couple missions completed. Probably a boss. They typically with these sort of events always end it with like a mini boss or something cool. 
I was just going to say, have the boss pop up and like, oh, look, fade out slowly or like halfway through the battle, kind of a fade out. Mm-hmm. You know? That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I can't wait to see what the heck they do because as of now, we've only gotten those, you know, the teasers, just that little nuggets. And I'm just like, oh, come mm-hmm. on, give me more. Come on, Gearbox, stop messing around with me here, please. <laughs> But one other thing they do like to mess around with is Morse code and Morse code hints and Morse code t- little teases and twicks and twappies. And apparently, this was on Twitch. I wasn't sure if it was in the gameplay reveal or the, the teaser, if it was just something that was up on the Twitch channel. But some more Morse code messages came through for Borderlands 3. One of them read, where is the first Vault Hunter? And the second message was, who is the Destroyer? So now, what do we know about these here, Eric? So... In a nutshell, boys and girls here, who is the first Vault Hunter? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I the first, first Vault Hunter obviously isn't Roland, you know, and uh, and Lilith and Mordecai and Brick. There's no way that's mm-hmm. the case. But the first hunters we know of are those those Vault Hunters. So I'm mm-hmm. kind of like, well, I've never heard of anything in lore and through anybody else that I listen to or watch talk about there being any before them or any storylines of Vault Hunters before them? I definitely agree. I don't remember any hard lore storylines. That article that Danny did link us to, and I'm sure she's going to put that in the uh-huh. show notes too because it's one that she found and we're talking about. But in that article it says there are rumors that it might be Marcus, Tannis, Moxie, and then I can't remember who the other rumored possible first Vault Hunter group was. But I, I still feel like if there's a group of four, there's still got to be one that came before him. There's still got to be yeah. some like legendary first one if there's if this is what the the hint mm-hmm. is about. I feel like that's the mystery. I feel like that's the part we're gonna start to learn more about is like the origin mm-hmm. the origin of the Volt Hunters and how this all really got going and started. Because like I said, yeah. I don't know much about it. I do agree with that with you and what you're saying. I think for sure Moxie and Marcus and all them were. Volt Hunters probably before Roland and them, but I don't think they're the first by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't think yeah. that applies. And the Destroyer, well, we know what the Destroyer is. That was the giant Cthulhu-like yeah. creature, tentacle creature that came out and tried to kill you when you opened the vault, killed Walt, killed Commandant Steel, yeah. and then, of course, we took it down, being Roland and them, took it down, and then it got taken back yeah. into the vault, and we presumed it was dead because Handsome Jack said, hey, look, I took its eyeball and I turned it into a weapon. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert for anybody who doesn't know, but it's been a long time. Sorry. But you should have played the pre-sequel yeah, by now. Exactly. Sorry, guys. So at that point, you presume he was able to get to said dead creature, walked in there, ripped its eye out, and used it as a weapon. But, of course, mm-hmm. it says, hey, you know, it's trying to ask you what is the destroyer. So it's like, oh, I don't you know, I guess maybe, like you were saying, it's going beyond like where he came from, and is there a whole planet of said destroyers or creatures like it, or or is it a god? Well, what, well, what I just thought of now too is you said obviously everyone knows you, you know you kill the de- the destroyer at the end, or everyone assumes it is, but when it's just the eyeball up in the pre sequel up in the Hyperion base, it's looking around uh-huh. like it has motion and it has like feeling to it, like sensitivity, because when stuff starts happening, it starts freaking out and uh-huh. wilding out. So it's still alive to some respect. So what happened? It, maybe the Destroyer still exists out there. It's just got a badass eye patch on like Slick Rick. <laughs> it's got an eye patch on his big eye. My little eyes still work, guys. I'm still fine. Don't worry mm-hmm. about me. I'm still chugging along. He's just Colonel Ty sitting in the corner sending out little Destroyers after mm-hmm. you. I just wonder if it kind of is alluding to, a, as I've been talking about, a Lovecraftian sort of thing. Where it's just one mm. one old god that was sealed away, and there's many more like it all over the place. So it's kind yeah. of trying to draw your attention to say, hey, remember this giant godlike creature that was sealed away in a vault that you released and had to kill? Hey, guess what? There's more, and there you know there's a whole freaking system or a whole godhood or whatever of them out there. Some kind of pantheon yes. of these creatures that may or may not be gods, but are some kind of like mega boss, celestial yeah, exactly. being type things. So yeah. I think that's probably more along the lines of what's going on. Hence why the little, uh, oh man, you know me and names, boys and girls, the alien people who are like, hey, vote hunter, blue, 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 la la la, follow us. <laughs> the there Indians. you go. That's the name. Jesus you know, Christ. I'm never gonna know names. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh goodness. So yeah, I agree. I think it's the the Iridians are involved. They know more than they're telling you. They know probably something about these said monsters. And then this code was kind of just letting us know to hey, you might want to start paying attention to that sort of thing. And we're going to get some big reveals and uh, some new big baddies to fight beyond just the Calypso Twins. Because I really suspect in this one that those two are not going to be the final bosses. I mean, if you're going to be traveling through different star systems, different planets, different things, it doesn't really make sense to just have, oh, look, we're the, we're the children of the vault, we're the cult of the vault, and we're also everywhere. I mean, it kind of does because vaults will be everywhere. But at the same time, where would this giant galaxy-wide operation come from? I feel like you're right in that they'll be like a, like the the secondary big bad. Like a, you beat them after a couple planets, and then oh, but also behind all that was this, and you got to open six more vaults to access the whatever thing. Uh-huh. I I think that's about right where we're gonna be, man. And then while we're on the the theories and you know conspiracies, etc., it was pointed out over the Twitter by multitudes of people. Don't know who the originator was. Sorry, I can't give you credit, but. And besides, it's just an opinion. But you remember when Battleborn put out the teaser through the Morse code that says, hey, you know, children of the, the vault, don't trust Tannis, come to Prometheus, etc." Yep. And we all were like, oh, my God, don't trust Tannis. She's evil. You know, we hate Tannis. Yeah. Well, now uh. with more context coming into play, everyone's starting to say, well, maybe this is the Calypso twins sending this code out because mm. Tannis screw- pretends like she's their friend and screws them over. And they had to flee Pandora, which will probably be the beginning of the storyline, is us getting them off of Pandora. And they had to go to Prometheus, and that's when they send out the code, hey, children of the vault, because that's not us, that's them. Don't trust Tannis, she's a betrayer. Come on over to Prometheus, that's where we're going. Man, I don't want Tannis to be a good person. I know. I want her to be terrible, so I can be like, Sean, your wife is a terrible person, you need to murder her in Act 2 of this game right here. Yeah. But yeah, that that totally makes sense. Maybe she was... You know, part of this whole crew, it went down to Pandora to find the Pandora vaults. And then, oh, look, hey, we discovered this, we discovered this, I started making friends, I got chairs on the ceiling, blah, blah, blah. Maybe that's why she's crazy, because of her indoctrination into the cult of the vault, children mm-hmm. of the vault style stuff. Oh, man, we can go into all kinds of stuff with that one. Exactly. So that's really cool. I like it. The more I think about it, the more I think that's exactly what went down, that's exactly what's happening. Mm -hmm. So kudos to the first individuals who went, hey, wait a minute, you had a great idea, and I'd throw your props if I could, but who knows, there's there's a slew of 4chan and Reddit and forums, and I don't know who said it first. I apologize. (laughs) And I have no idea, see, as bad as you are with names, that's me with forums and Reddits and chans there's seven chan don't even, and a you don't even chan know, and yeah. 14 discords know. you know god bless <laughs> the only chan i know is cutie chan from from yakuza yeah no oh yeah. my god of course yeah, yeah. Of, course, of course man yes got it got it you're, you're terrible man no i'm pretty good yeah yeah i'll give you i'll give you that <laughs> so another big thing everyone's been talking about I guess, I guess it's more like scandal than rumor, but also all rumor and then like whose story is right. It's the whole Troy Baker situation because everyone knows you saw Reese in the trailer, in the, in the first trailer, actually, the Borderlands 3 reveal trailer. He had a big funky mustache on. He had his robot arm. The, like the Children of the Vault symbol popped up, kind of like an upside-down A, kind of looking like Atlas, but maybe Children of the Vault, blah, 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 blah. And apparently it got to Troy Baker and the people were saying, hey, are you Reese in the new Borderlands 3? And he went, nope. If you see that trailer, that's not me. I really wish it was, but it's not. So he says, "Hey, go tell him you want me back. I'd love to be back." And he says, "Hey, I don't normally do this, but I, you know, hey, you know, Gearbox team, if you have a character and it's a particular voice actor, hey, make sure you reach out and try to give that person the chance to be the actor because of lore reasons and just being a gamer himself." He said it's important to him, you know, just having that consistency. So that was the end of that. We all thought, "Oh, okay." And then they started this whole petition to get Troy Baker back as Reese. Well, okay, we thought, there you go. And then all of a sudden, Gearbox comes back, more specifically, Randy Pitchford, and says, hey, I went and talked to my audio guy, and he said they asked Troy Baker to come back. He said no. And he says, now, before everybody goes crazy, also, it really doesn't matter, because the way things go down, 
it's a weird part, and it wouldn't uh, be him anyway, basically, in a nutshell. But you guys will have to wait to play the game to find out, and that just basically goes to show that with this big, fake, goofy mustache and his, I'm not Reese, I'm some weird guy, I'm assuming he puts on a, hey, oh, I'm Vanderbilt von Furbaby kind of voice, so he's not really Reese, he's making the goofy voice, so it wouldn't really make sense for it to exactly sound like Troy Baker, but who knows? Who knows? All we know is that Troy Baker is not Reese right now. Uh-huh. Or, or like I said earlier, we're going to retcon some crap, and we're going to make it so you didn't destroy the backup, and it slowly corrupted Reese, and he turned back into Handsome Jack. So really, Reese is just Handsome Jack. So we're just getting Handsome Jack back. That's what's happening. Which would be even better, because you can, can you imagine Handsome Jack trying to play Reese, but then also, like, he, like, maybe, like, passed out, and he woke up with this big grown mustache. <laughs> he was like, does Reese have a mustache? I don't know. I don't remember. Hey, look. I am Reese. I'm it's your me. buddy. Check out my big mustache. And Fiona be, and crew aren't with him. That's at, true. at least in the trailers anyway. So, mm. Or maybe they found out and had to leave him or he killed him or got rid of him or tried to kill him and hence why they're all off doing their own thing now. Hey man, mm. woo, that's some that's some that's some conjecture island stuff right there. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> we can't go back there. There's too many cannibals. Yeah, it's it's real dangerous. We gotta wait a while. <laughs> but whether you're a Troy Baker diehard or just a, a gearbox diehard, wait till you play the game. We'll see what it pans out to be. All I'm saying is if Fiona's there and she's not voiced by Laura Bailey though, then I'm boycotting hundred percent. I'd throw the table. Because she, she was the boss in Saints Row 4, so any character that was her has to stay her forever. I'm just saying, Laura Bailey, she's got to be in every game, every single game. I, I'd agree with that statement. She did a fantastic job. I also think Troy Baker did a fantastic job. Oh, yeah, but according yeah. to Randy, it really won't matter because they're not actually using Reese as Reese or whatever the situation may be. I will just but say he- that it's just strange how that all went down. I feel like there was just confusion in the whole thing, maybe some mis representation or misinterpretation going on because it's just kind of weird yeah i I feel like at the most it could be just lines got crossed somewhere along the line like we thought we sent it out we didn't hear word back so we assumed not or same thing on his end whatever whatever it turns out to be it'll all it'll all blow over he'll get a million more roles because he's a big shot guy gearbox will hire amazing voice talent like they always do it'll all be good it'll all be fun Exactly. So we'll let that one rest in peace, and we'll see Troy Baker on the other side. So kind of a weird spot here, and I don't really want to talk too much on it because it's not I got got to rant about this. Oh, my God. Oh, Oh, jeez. Here we go. We're we're talking about this for All right, here we go. So anywho, obviously we already said that Borderlands 3 is going to be exclusive to the Epic Store for six months before it comes to Steam. I don't think we actually said that. No, but that's the facts. Them's okay, the, them's the facts. I we were just so excited about the release date and stuff. We just went woo. We just went nuts. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Well, here it is, boys and girls. The Epic Store has exclusive rights to Borderlands Three for six months before it's going to hit Steam. Obviously, it's going to launch day and date with uh, Epic on consoles. So if you're playing on console, none of this matters. It doesn't mean anything to you. But if you're a PC player, it created a whole windstorm and poop storm mm-hmm. of trouble. Uh, a lot of individuals on the PC side who've been loyal to Steam, playing on Steam forever, have all their games wrapped around the Steam machine, are mm-hmm. very upset because they don't want to switch over to Epic. They don't want to have to split their games onto Epic stores. And of course, they've, they've brought up a mi- million other reasons why Epic sucks. But most of those reasons, if they really s- just calmed down and like looked at it, are just because it's a new system and it takes yeah. time for the system to get everything into place. In fact, they have a layout stating what they're going to do over the next few months, like getting better coding, uh, adding on achievements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So over the course of the next few months, they've laid out to you that they're improving all these different systems and they're going to make the Epic Store really cool and usable and fr- you know consumer friendly. Da 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 da, so on and so forth. But as was explained to me, I get I get that main argument. I do get it. Yeah. You don't want to go where you've been. You've been 100 years on this one place. All the achievements are there. All your friends are there. Everything you know. You've got the cool style you, you've put up on your Steam. And you don't want to go, hey, and now I've got to get Epic up here. Give them, as you said, my credit card. Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. I get that. I think this is total uh-huh. This is Uh Uh everybody should boycott that no i don't care because i don't play on pc but i will say just playing the devil's advocate or taking a step back and looking at it anytime there's exclusivity people are going to be upset 
Because, I mean, sure, Epic Store itself is free, but nobody likes new launchers, especially on PC. People didn't like Steam when it first came out, and you know, obviously it's the, the go-to now. But nobody likes Uplay, nobody likes Origin, nobody wants another launcher to have to run on their system, to have its own updates, to have its own things, to have its own bugs, to have its own crashes, blah, 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 blah. So I understand it just from a purely, purely hands-off point of view. To me, it doesn't matter at all, but, I mean, I get it. When something's exclusive to one thing and you aren't like Johnny Gung Ho about that one thing, it, it it sucks and it feels wrong and you don't like it. But to to me, it means nothing because they're going to play it on PS4 with you. Mm-hmm. And to me, it means nothing because once again, I'm playing on PS4, but ultimately as well, I do play PC games. But mm. I'm I'm not a uh, I'm not in in the in the world in the PC world, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. achievements, friends, none of that means anything to me on the PC because everything I play on PC, I'm just playing by myself. I'm just dinking around. I don't care who knows what I've played or seen or done. None of it matters. So, for me, <laughs> oh, you need me to download this to play a game? Whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't yeah. care. But I, I get it. I understand the frustration. I hope everybody calms down. And the and the huge kerfuffle that came of it all was that people started going in and review bombing on Steam the yeah. old Borderlands games. And, of course, at the moment, at the time, they didn't have anything in place. So, you know, the review scores were, you know, it was it was going to fluctuate, but they had to wait, what is it, 90 days? It was, there was some kind of time there, gate on it. There is some kind of buffer zone in place, and then I don't know if it's new, but I think it's been added recently. It was added. Right it was now. added. It was added after Randy Pitchford's statement, but it was added in and took care of the problem. So Randy Pitchford made the statement after the individuals all started review bombing the Borderlands games. Randy responded to another employee's of his response and said, you know, along the lines of, "Hey, you know, this kind of this kind of attitude and this kind of uh, support from Steam or lack there of support from Steam does make me re- want to reconsider Gearbox publishing standard, you know, where we put our games." And then that, of course, set people off. And got people going nuts. Now, very briefly after that, they fixed the issue. So now, none of it mattered. The review bombing didn't mean anything. It wasn't going to harm uh, the Borderlands games' reviews ultimately whatsoever. Yeah, and I mean, I think that system's been in place. There, It will like, flag a warning up. Like, hey, most recent reviews have come out since this point in time. Especially for something like Borderlands 2. It's been around for a million years. And then, oh, here's... 7,000 negative reviews in the span of a week. I, I think it flagged up something saying that. But now I don't know if they've remedied, if they've cleared it all up or what it is. Mm-hmm. The, the one thing I will say, playing 100% devil's advocate, you know you know how I always am. I'm that, I'm that guy. But Randy saying this kind of stuff happening makes us not want to publish on Steam anymore. From a business perspective, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, I know he's just saying that in the heat of the moment because his whole studio is all riled up. Everybody who's on Twitter is saying, man, this really sucks. This is stupid. Anyone who does this is dumb, which is true. But then saying that, well, maybe we just won't publish it to Steam or it makes me not want to. There's no way you're just going to shut down a whole avenue of revenue. Nobody would do that. So it just seems like a an unwise tweet to put out there. I don't know. Here's the thing. And... And I thought about this because you were you were uh, rolling your eyes at me the other day when I was complaining about people on Twitter and some things going on, and I kind of stopped and I thought about it and I said, you know, ultimately, these are individuals' personal Twitters. Yeah, they have the right to say whatever the hell they want. If they're mad about True. something, this is their personal Twitter. They are still a person. They are still a human. They're not on mm. Gearbox officials. Twitter coming and saying this stuff. This is them as a human being, as someone who can be hurt, can be angered, can be pushed and pulled in different directions, saying and doing stuff. So if they want to say something, they have a right to. If the person doesn't want to say something, they have a right to. So I respect that, but I also see what you're saying, is since he is a CEO of said company, what he says, regardless of whether it's on a personal account, regardless of where it's at or when it's at, it can have an effect on the company or on the image of said company. So I do think that ultimately that tw- that tweet was unwise just because all it really served to do was rile the community up even more and put them in more of a fever pitch instead of just ignoring them and letting them realize they're not getting what they wanted. And then yeah. like good little animals, they'll all scurry back into the, the you know, the 
wherever they come from, the troll lands and the and the other places, and it'll die down and it'll go away, and everyone will get on board, and it's not the end of the world. And I think you mentioning you reiterating rather these are people's personal accounts really kind of brings it back full circle for me because when I think Randy Pitchford, I think of Gearbox. Uh-huh. But as we know, Randy Pitchford is that guy who goes on Twitter, gets trolled, trolls people back. I don't mean he does it in a malicious way, but he likes to get, he likes to light fires under people. Oh, yeah. So with this being his personal thing, and, you know, maybe he was hot about it at the time. I'm sure Well, maybe if I, once I say this, then people will be all up in arms. Well, here you go. Bloop. Ha <laughs> ha guys. But realistically, in a business he sense, never we're never going to do that. But yeah. He was literally just trolling back. Yeah. And I feel that's kind of where he was going with it. I mean, obviously, he was still, he was hot. But by when he was mad about it, all he was trying to do is then, I'm if I'm mad, I'm going to make y'all even madder. <laughs> exactly. You guys are trying to get under my skin. Here, I'm going to get under yours. <laughs> but unfortunately, gotcha. then news news outlets and stuff pick it all up, and then everybody puts it in their mouth and just goes nuts with it all. Mm. It turned into just a huge thing that it really had no business being. It's kind of like yeah. when you watch the real news in the world, and, you, and you're like, what is this on the news for? I don't know. Okay, whatever. Uh-huh. Cool beans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take that whole dumpster fire of and discussion and put it in the dumpster where it belongs. We talked about it. It's done. Now we're going to talk about some fun stuff because our boy Mental Mars, I think this was the same day the last episode dropped and I pulled it open and I went, look at all this cool details. What is this going on? He's got a big old article all about the gun manufacturers in Borderlands 3, all kinds of teases about the abilities of all these different guns you're going to be getting. And I was like, wow, A, where did you get that info? That's pretty dope. You're the man, Mental Mars. And B, this all sounds freaking amazing. So I figured we just walk through it and just be like, man, either that sounds cool or... What if this happens? What about that? What about... Tick, 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 tick. So if you missed the article, definitely check out the show notes. I'm sure Danny's put it in there. But he goes through... He talks about the loot system, which we talked about in the last episode because we had details on that. And then he starts to break it down. Hey, the gun manufacturers are here. Here are the gun manufacturers that we know about so far. And there's a little, like, sentence or two write-up about each one. So I'm going to start off right from the top from our boy Mental Mars article. TDR. Toss your gun like a grenade to reload, then watch it pursue a nearby enemy as a fully loaded version to destruction in your hands. This is the gun with legs. I called it all on my own. This is the TDO reload. This is the gun that's running around. But it also, well, something else we learned in later tweets, these guns also verbally abuse the enemies as they chase them down and shoot them. That's amazing. Well, did we learn that all of them do it or only like a legendary version of it? Because I've seen it go both ways. Some people were saying okay. that they think it might just be like a legendary version. Actually screams insults at people as it goes you know, running towards them to kill them. But I don't know if that's that's not conclusive. I don't know for sure. I, I mean, I don't think anybody said 100%. But so many people have said, oh, your guns, your guns chase down enemies and yell insults at them. Mm-hmm. Guns, uh. But I would love it to just be like the Bane 2.0 where it's just the one. Yeah, I would prefer that, would, that be amazing. but at the same time, sort of not, just because why the hell not? If I'm rocking TDR the whole time, mm-hmm. all my guns are screaming insults, that's just constant amusement. I wouldn't have to focus on having that one particular gun forever, especially if it wasn't that great. I feel like that's too specialized, though. That's like that's too much fun, because I would never use anything but TDRs, because I'd have guns screaming and yelling all the time. That's true. I, th- I think the running and shooting with the TDR reload is enough and then legendaries will be yapping insults. Because uh-huh. then you could have the Australian gun, you could have the Bane, you could have all kinds of different accent guns, you could have you could have a Truxican gun running around. Oh, boy. Pickles. Your Pickles one. Davis Pickle <laughs> gun, yes, that's right. Uh, I, I look forward to it. But you know what? You wouldn't just rock TDR, okay? Because there's a billion other freaking guns here, Matt, and you haven't even got mm-hmm. started because we're going to go on to the next one, which is Hyperion, <laughs> and that is... <clears throat> Excuse me. Aim down the sights to take cover behind your weapon-mounted shield and keep your finger on the trigger for increased accuracy. Uh, weapon-mounted shield, sir. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm drinking beers. I'm having fun. I'm not yep. paying attention to what I'm doing because I'm just <laughs> pushing the trigger down <laughs> and not dying because I got a shield in front of me and I'm shooting tons of rounds. I like it. Mm. Now, this is the one thing I had a question about that obviously nobody can answer right now. But 
I'm wondering how that weapon mount of shield works. Like when you aim down the sights, does it automatically pop out? Does it only pop out if you have ammo? Does it go away if your clip, if you know, if you have no ammo for the SMG or whatever it is? Because I could picture that being the case. Like if I'm flack and I got my pets pets going or whatever, I'm like, oh, I got no ammo for this gun. But the boss is about to unleash his big fire slam or whatever. All right, whoop! I'm gonna hold it up, do no damage, but I'm still gonna be shielded. Mm-hmm. Who well, knows? And are some larger or smaller? So say, is there like a legendary out there that puts up a giant bulwark shield? And then are mm-hmm. they stationary or mobile? Are they attached to the gun so while you're moving they stay moving with you? Or once they pop, do they kind of like slam, like hit into the ground and basically become a stationary shield? At which point, if you leave, you no longer have cover. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to find out. So next up, we got the classic. We got Molly Wan. It says right here, toggle between two elements. Charge your weapon and deal guaranteed elemental damage with your finger glued to the trigger. Now, toggle between two elements, that's amazing. Obviously, in Borderlands 2, we had some dual element guns, but they were two at the exact same time. There was like the shock and corrosive. I think it was an SMG, was it, that you could get? But Uh now that you can choose between two... That will be freaking amazing because there's so many times, oh, I got a really good corrosive SMG, but we're fighting all skin enemies, so oh well. Well now, mm-hmm. whoop, swap it to fire, now you got it. And you're good for almost any scenario instead of just dinking around with one then having to put three in to get the whole mix mm-hmm. together. It makes Malawan much more versatile yeah. and useful. And then on top of it, you can charge your weapon to get a guaranteed elemental shot. Yeah. Which is fantastic because there's so many times where I'm like, I need this electrical mm-hmm. hit to go off so his dang shield goes down so we can take care yep. of business. And, of course, you shoot 50 th- freaking rounds into him and it doesn't, RNG doesn't favor you and give you the proc mm-hmm. you need. This allows that to be a moot yep. point. Now you can charge it real quick. Boom, shield's down. You can call it out to your buddies, rock and roll, kill the enemy, keep moving yeah. on. Easy peasy. Malawan for the win. Malawan's always been for the win. God, making it good. You know it. We'll go ahead and leave Malawan behind now, but we're speaking about another wonderful, wonderful manufacturer. That's Doll, everybody. Toggle between alternate fire modes depending on your play style, your predicament, and your predilication. And your predilication. Predilection. You know, Eric, I know somebody who said this a million times better than you. It's third shift veteran. Jim Faronda. What do you say, Jim? Doll weapons. Toggle between alternate fire modes depending on your play style, your predicament, and your predilection for bonus damage. Now, we don't have too many details on this one. Alt- obviously, alternate fire modes are always good. I am always reminded of Perfect Dark anytime I see alternate fire, because those were always amazing in that game. You tell me I can make my gun act different. I love it. I love it. Yes, you're right. For doll, <laughs> I don't know what the heck that really even mm. means. I'm I'm assuming that it's going to be more like a boss fight sort of mm-hmm. weapon because it, it kind of sounds like it's like very strategic, very pinpoint, you know, what you want, something you need or need to mm-hmm. do. So I'm assuming if there's a soft spot on a boss point like his eyeball or armpit, this is going to be the kind of gun that's going to give you that laser focus. Yeah, I could see that. Instead of being but, like a kind of like a spray and pray assault rifle, maybe the alternate fire is it shoots like 25% of your clip as one focused mm-hmm. like single single bolt action fire type of thing yeah so you'll be able to go to like at the mobs and do spray and praise but then obviously alter over and do the the micro mm-hmm. shot something like that i don't know that's the only thing i can guess at right now or something just like the uh oh man i don't know what that assault rifle is that i had in borderlands 2 but if you weren't aiming down sights it was just a normal assault rifle but when you aim down the sights it shot like in a cone Shot that mm-hmm. spread shot of like five or six bullets. Maybe stuff like that, just continuing to build on that kind of thing. But make it like cool actual fire mode, so instead of having just to go either one or yeah. the other, you'll toggle between three or four switches on that mm-hmm. gun, which will allow you to do all those different actions. So, yeah, has has potential. I mean, actually, think, thinking about it even more, Dahl has always been more military-based. So, obviously, mm-hmm. your assault rifle, you have single-shot, three-shot burst, full auto. And then Why full auto. Why not just have that? I mean, as the most basic mm-hmm. option. There you go. Rudimentary basic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I agree, sir. I think we got it. I think we did it. So roll it on into the classic Jacobs. Here you can deliver devastating critical hits to enemies soft and sensitive. Then joy puke as your bullets ricochet towards other targets. I've never seen Eric use any kind of ricocheting bullet thing. I know he doesn't even know what that is about. But I'm going to tell you that would be pretty cool. I think that's neat. When I got, If I ever got a gun that did that, I would be really happy. Yeah, you're a liar, Matt. <laughs> that's my whole life. So once again, if you haven't figured it out, my life in Borderlands revolved around drinking beers and playing said game. And I needed to figure out a way to be successful without having to try hard. So I'd get Gage, and I'd get the ricocheting bullets, and then I'd get conference call, uh. <laughs> and we'd go to town. So when I shot guns, there was nothing but ricocheting bullets flying everywhere constantly. It never stopped. It never ended. I remember the first time you got that, you put it on. You're like, all right, cool, conference call. And I had no idea what it did. The very next fight we got into, there were bullets everywhere. Like my screen was slowing down. There were so many bullets. I went, what the f*** is happening right now? you are like, this, this gun is so cool. Boom, 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 boom. There's bullets everywhere. <laughs> yep. And the drunker I got, did just shoot infinitely, never stop. <laughs> you should really get never really stop. get a corrosive thing out. Bullets everywhere. Oh, Eric's Eric's yep. losing it. He's going. He's going. He's going. He's barely playing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can tell, I'm a Jacobs fan because of mm. this. I love ricocheting rounds. I can't wait to get my hands on some good stuff. Plus, of course, they add in the beautiful critical hits. I love critical mm. hits. Nobody dislikes seeing those big red numbers or yellow numbers, whatever it is, whatever they're going to go with. It's a wonderful thing. It makes you feel good, and it's great when their heads explode, et cetera, et cetera. Uh -uh. And I will say I've always been a big fan of Jacobs because anytime you can fan the hammer on their pistols and just pop, 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 I love that style. So more Jacobs is always a good thing. I agree, sir. I agree. And more of a good thing would be Vladoff, everybody. Woo! I, I feel like I haven't touched with Vladoff in a long mm -hmm. time. It's not never been my, my jam, but you know what? Hey, augment these rapid-firing, ammo-hungry guns with under-barrel attachments, including tasers, rocket tubes, and additional gun barrels. Woo! The fully customizable package right here. This is, you want a gun and you want to make mm -hmm. it? This is who you're going with. Flat off, everybody. I will say, I've always been a fan of flat offs, just because their assault rifles are the only ones I like. They get that spin up, and then they're just pouring out bullets and they got a pretty good clip on them too so i've been a fan of Lanoff to to have that ability plus whatever you can chunk underneath that gun barrel like oh man i don't want to carry a rocket launcher and an assault rifle and a pistol and a smig and a this that and the other thing well maybe i can put like it says rocket tubes underneath that now if i'm in a pinch oh second wind time rocket rocket tubes saved my life foom foom got it now i don't have to switch have it slowly come out, have me aim down the sights, and rock it slow. Boom. You got two and one right there. I agree with that statement. I would love the idea of a minigun with some grenade launcher undercarriage. Mm -hmm. Gosh, man. Just reaping out them bullets and then just throwing the grenades in on top of it. So you got the AOE with that heavy fire going. Mm -hmm. You're an unstoppable, crazy person. I like the idea. I don't like the fact that you go through rounds like a maniac. Sure. And then you're uh, out of ammo and switching the gun off, you know, very quickly. That's my only problem. That's why I don't generally use them. It's because the drunker I get, I don't get the rounds. And then that gun basically sits with no ammo all the damn yeah, time. Yeah, true, true. So next up, we have Zorg. Because with Replay, another Zorg invention, it's even easier. One shot, pow. And Replay sends every following shot to the same location. Brrr. This is the fifth element gun. It's Atlas. Step one, hit your enemies with tracker tags. Step two, unleash a hail of smart bullets that track towards your targets. Step three, loot. This is, this is Mr. Zorg standing in that room with all the alien dudes in the fifth element, and he shoots the dummy with the police thing on it. This is that. Oh. I love it. I love it. Verbatim. That's, that's what yeah. it is. This is also going to be, as has been pointed out a million times already, the boss gun. Yeah. Because you're going to get a tricky boss where you're, you're going to have to cheese it and hide behind a rock and come up and just do certain things <laughs> for a half hour before the this boss is a drunken goes down. Gun. <laughs> Terramorphous. <yeah. laughs> this is Drunken Gun 101. Hide behind the rock. Let's talk about our weeks and how much we dislike or like people. <laughs> and then just shoot these smart guts. <laughs> Send your pet out. Oh, there goes the skag man. <laughs> yep. Yeah, get him. Ping. Okay. <laughs> we win. Yay. <laughs> I like the idea of this gun. I think it's going to be very handy to have one, but 
that's not my style. That's not my play style. So for me, besides very specific scenarios, I probably won't mess with this one too much unless, of course, I see one in game that's just stupid awesome and I can't resist. Mm. I will say this will be like my low health gun. Like I'll have an SMG or something. I'll be like, oh, man, I need to get behind a shield. I need to get behind some cover. Pop. And then while I'm running to get that health needle or I'm running to the cover, now I'm spraying in the vague general direction of it, and I'm at least doing damage while I'm running away to try and get something done. True that, true that. Well, we'll see more, I'm sure, pretty soon, especially at May 1st when that gameplay event happens. Mm -hmm. Everybody, as a reminder, May 1st, don't you freaking forget. But moving on, we've got your one and only, the true, the true gun manufacturer, Torque. All right, you need to switch between regular and sticky projectile fire modes. Stickies do more damage if a bunch of them detonate on the same target. I love Mm -hmm. this. This is like the Needler. I don't even need to say it. Everybody knows what it is and what I'm talking about. It's like the Needler in Halo. (laughs) Massive damage, as long as you connect, obviously. That's the key. And not only connect, but connect with a whole bunch of rounds. I feel like this is going to work just like that one. Whereas if you miss a whole bunch and you're an idiot and inaccurate, this is going to be a terrible weapon. Now, see, what this makes me think of is way back to Goldeneye and or Perfect Dark again. If wondering how these sticky projectiles work, if they can work like proximity mines where you shoot one out on the ground, maybe lure somebody into it, or if it's like remote detonation where you can like load up somebody with a whole bunch and then hit your secondary fire in the sticky projectile fire mode and then make them all pop all at once. Because that would be even more fun just just in a pure gameplay perspective. Just I'm sure there'll be iterations yeah. of that. I'm sure some of the guns will have like a remote detonator type thing, but I feel like the basic ones will just yeah. be like, if you hit them with seven of those ten rounds you shot out and then it explodes, obviously you're getting crazy damage, you know, huge crits, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. But those those... Super alternate fire is what I'm really interested in. I love, mm-hmm. I love, even if it's just for my own edification, just like loading up an enemy, like this dude's all covered up except his face, and then boom, giant fireball, or <laughs> load up the wall right next to him and lure him over, and boom, something crazy. Well, and that's more along the lines of what I was thinking. It was like, all right, we know that cage door is going to open, and we get a huge wave of psychos. Yep. You just go all around that thing, and then you go, you ready? Okay, pull the lever. <laughs> Yeah. Away you go. So hopefully some have that, yes, because that would make it way more fun, even though it's fun anyway, because yeah. it's Torg, well, yeah. and Torg's always fun. <laughs> so there you go. And then last but not least, we got the Children of the Vault replacing the Bandit and or Scav guns. Enjoy uninterrupted damage dealing, courtesy of, quote fingers, infinite ammo magazines, occasionally interrupted by unpredictable overheating. This will be the bad drunken gun. I'm going to pull it out, I got infinite ammo, dude. What the hell am I doing? Oh, man. I mean, I really like this because obviously you don't have to worry about ammo. So it will be good. it'll be a good in a pinch gun. But I don't like overheating mechanics that much, especially if it's unpredictable. So if it's not a gauge on my screen that I can play with and toy with, I'm not going to like this as much. Yeah, you can manipulate I honestly think it's going to be fun because it is, to me, it is another just dumb dumb gun, yeah. you know? Just, just uh, malfunction, man. Whoa. Hold them off for a minute. Mm. And then I'm sure it'll be some kind of animation where you shake it or, or it'll just be a meter that, over, you know, the heat goes away, the heat gauge goes away, and then you're back up and running. Mm. Probably more than likely it'll be an animation because that's typically how they do things with the reloads. They'll just have something going for you yeah. there. And then you'll be back up and running. And like you said, and I said earlier, I don't have to worry about ammo. I don't have to Mm -hmm. sit here and be like running over top of it and like, oh, hang on. Eric, you need to open boxes. I don't boxes. I don't remember the boxes. Where the boxes at? I can't can't see. (laughs) Just load up your cough, man. Just pull up up your COV weapon set. Yep, pull up the COVs and go. Mm -hmm. All right, man. I can doubt it. These are all level twos, dude. Are you doing any damage? Shut up, man. I'm I'm shooting. No, it doesn't matter. Exactly. I feel like these are going to be the ones that look the coolest too, oh, yeah. because it's Children of the Vault. So it's going—I think it's going to have that really cool, you know, Spike theme and the, you know, the whole the vibe that you're getting the goth, weird punk kid mm. thing going. I think we're going to see that and the psychos involved, all that. Now, what really makes me wonder is, lore-wise, how do these work? Because obviously, we mm-hmm. know one of the Calypso twins has like sireny abilities or a sireny look on her. The other one's got the maybe the supposed slurp off siren abilities type thing 
is this like a siren powered gun? Does she like shine down upon you and bless you with energy ammo? Is that how this works? How does it like how can you have infinite ammo but just overheating? What does it do? What how does it work? I'm I'm assuming it's some kind of technology from a vault mm-hmm. that they got their hands on and it's allowing them to have some kind of energy source that's infinite, quote figures. Mm-hmm. They were like, and they're utilizing it with their weaponry, and that's how they're so advanced and able to, you know, get out there. Maybe it like pulls energy from the the vault, whatever the mystical vault ability is, to mm-hmm. manufacture the actual bullets that it shoots out, or maybe it's just energy. Uh, I mean, th- energy rounds. Yeah, yeah, that's what excites me about it is finding out what it is and having Tannis go, "Oh man, you got one of the COV weapons. Here's how that works, or let's go test it out on a you know a dumb." Whatever, just like those, the Iridian guns or the the special ability guns from Borderlands Two, when you went and uh-huh. shot up all those other guys, you got like ten, twenty kills with those. Mm-hmm. I want that mission yeah, so whatever. I can understand this. Now, last but not least, I mean, obviously there are pictures of some of the guns. We won't get into all that because they look like guns. They look really cool. But one other thing at the very end of this article, Mental Mars goes into talking about elemental weapon damage and ones that have been. Shown off and or revealed, he says, are fire, cryo, corrosive, shock. And then there was a new elemental barrel spotted in the trailer. Now, again, this is from Mental Mars's article, so I don't know if any of that's been solved or revealed or confirmed or denied, but that's what he's got in there. A, I'm happy to see cryo back. And B, there's another new element. What is that? I want to know what that is. Well, I got three things. First off, I agree 100%. Thank goodness cryo's back. I loved cryo in the pre-sequel. Mm-hmm. I prayed it would come back. Sure enough, here it is. The voices have been answered. Secondly, we all knew there was going to be a new element. I mean, that's just what Borderlands does. Every time they come out with one, they throw out a new element for you to play with. And lastly, please, 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 from Eric on the third shift crew, don't let it be another slag-type feature. Oh, God. Yeah. I hated that. It limited you so much in the uh, you know overpowered mode, and I did not enjoy that whatsoever. I hated, oh, slag him up. Okay, switch. Now you can shoot him. Oh, slag him up. Now you can switch. Now you can shoot yeah. him. I don't like that. I want to play the way I want to play. I don't mind, obviously, doing some strategizing mm-hmm. and, of course, going at them for their weaknesses. So, say, if they're you know weak against fire, using fire weapons. But I hated having to always have slag on hand, yep. slag them before you can do anything. Yuck. Don't do it. Or if there is something like that, have it be a base ability for most of your vault hunters. Because obviously once we got the commando up to his capstone on one of the trees, the turrets had mm-hmm. slag bullets anyway. So that helped out a lot. But like you said, any kind of boss where those didn't work, oh, well, get out your crappy slag pistol. Pew, pew, pew. All right, we got him. Switch over. It's already gone. Ugh. Switch back, pew, pew, pew. Well, I'll just stay on it. I'll just keep slagging. You just do damage. You do all the damage. I'll sit here and just plink, plink, plink. I'm out of mm-hmm. ammo. Oh, we're dead. Uh-oh. <laughs> exactly. So the third shift crew says no more slag or any mechanic that's basically the same exact thing. Thank you, Gearbox. You guys and gals are the best. We know you're listening, and we know you're going to do that because you're amazing. Yeah, that's right. And I think that pretty much wraps up the article, unless I missed anything, which is possible. But hey, that'll give us more to discuss on a future episode. Hey, indeed it will. And lastly, before we do the wrap-up and end the show, I do want to say that Low Lines is out there putting together all the hints, secrets, tips, all in one spot on his website. Mm -hmm. So if you want to kind of get into the groove of seeing what's been figured out, what hasn't, and who, more importantly, who figured it out, because, you know, know, they need some props, too. He's getting all that put together, so check out Low Lines. He's a cool guy. He's been in the community forever. I'm sure we'll have a link below because Danny's awesome like that. And that's all I wanted to say. Just wanted to remember before I forgot. Yeah, Low Lines is awesome. Obviously, we saw a lot of the stuff he did with Battleborn back in the day. So seeing that he's back here, back in it for Borderlands 3, creating cool community resources for people to find out that stuff and get credit for their finds. That's awesome. He's an awesome dude. Good job on him. And also, now that I'm on the subject, there's a brand new podcast out there that's going to be covering exclusively Borderlands 3. It's called The Borderlands 3 Show. So, you know what? After you're done listening to Third Shift, of course, why don't you head on over there and give these guys a shot and see if you like them? Because, hey, it's always cool to have more people in the community excited about what Gearbox is up to and doing and covering crap and going back and forth and doing all sorts of cool things, man. Yeah, I will say definitely... 
Props to them. Congrats on their first episode that launched just a few days ago. Looking forward to seeing what all they're doing. Obviously, we'll be covering all the Gearbox stuff. And if you want just specifically Borderlands 3, go check those guys out. Like I said, they seem like good dudes. They gave us some props, so we'll give them some props. Props to you, fellas. Indeed. Can't wait to hear more from them. See how they go. See what's going on. Because they're talking already about trying to get some peeps on the show. Oh, yeah. Just waiting for that invite. Let me refresh my... uh, let me re- refresh my Gmail again here. Let me see. Let me see any. Let me refresh. Nothing yet. Not yet. I'm, I'm All immediately right. well, awaiting the invite. All this. right. Perfect. And with that, Matt, we should probably wrap the show up because it's sleepy time. Well, it's definitely sleepy time, man. I'm just. If you guys want to contact us. <coughs> anyway, <laughs> if you guys want to contact us, if you got. <laughs> If you want to send us any questions, any comments, any concerns, any feedback, if you just want to say hi, if you want to say that my impression of Mr. Zorg when I was talking about the Atlas guns was really good and Eric did a way worse version of the doll one that Jim Ferrona did, send us that via email, info at thirdshift.me. Tweet it at us at thirdshiftme or find us on Facebook under Third Shift. Indeed, you can find us there. You can also find us over on Patreon. If you like what we did, you like what we're doing, you like where we're going, please consider heading over there and throwing us a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, anything. We treat it just like a tip jar. So anything is awesome by us. Obviously, we do have some tiers set up. So if you want some extra content from us, well, you know what to do. And if you can't afford to do that, we understand because money is tight. You got to pay bills. You got to support the family or yourself or your mouth or whatever it is you need to do. We get it. You can also give us the likes, the Facebooks likes, the thumbs ups on the Twitters, all the cool mailbag questions, five star reviews, anything and everything helps us, keeps motivated, rocking it out and doing all the good things. And with this huge influx of listeners lately, all of you out there listening for the first time, I hope you like what you hear and we can't wait to see you next time. And then next time we'll be coming up on the 19th of April because this podcast drops every Friday. So we'll be back in your ear holes then. And you can find that episode on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Podbean, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And as I always say, if you like what we're doing and you'd like to help us out, please give us a like, a rating, review, a comment, a subscription, any kind of good thing on any one of those good services because it does help us out and we really do appreciate it. And hey, speaking of helping us out, also find us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash thirdshiftme. I'll be there playing Nier Automata this weekend, getting weird, seeing like weird sexy robots and then not knowing why they're there or what they're doing or who they are. I'm just going to be lost and baffled. So if you want to see me, getting very confused by sexy robots <laughs> that how how how, how do you that not sounds wanna, great that, that's sounds a hard sell right there watch matt get confused by sexy robots twitch.tv slash third shift me give us a watch give us a follow give us some love over there too please do matt's got it right give us some love over there we'd really appreciate it we've been rock and rolling getting some new followers getting towards our goal it's awesome please head over there and help us help you that's right. And hey, for Third Shift, I'm Matt. He's Eric. Danny's on the edit at making us sound good. There's nothing else to say, but don't, don't forget, forget to say. To say, 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 say. Shut up and sit down.